This is my uh, CAT synthesizer from Octave Electronics that I purchased in 1976. Um, purchased it brand new when I was 16 years old. I have not powered it up for probably uh, 25 years. So, um, and the last time I turned it on, one of the uh, oscillators was bad. Uh, before I power this back up again, I'm going to take it apart and check the uh, electrolytic capacitors that are in the uh, power supply. The um, IC chips, it's, it's an analog synthesizer, so uh, many of the um, analog transistor chips um, they're, they're not available anymore or very hard to come by. So um, I will take the synthesizer apart and check those caps out. So uh, the, the next thing you will see, uh, in order to take it apart, you have to take all of these knobs. Let me try to focus. You have to take all of the slider controls um, the, the little knobs, everything has to come off before the um, uh, circuit board will drop out. So it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a project. There's four screws on the back to take the back off. Uh, I won't show taking it apart, but I will show the, uh, the circuit boards inside. Let's focus that. Okie dokes. Okay, real quick. Um, it wasn't too bad taking off the uh, the knobs and slider knobs. Um, so this is what the uh, cat looks like with all the knobs removed. And don't laugh, but I like um, putting everything back exactly the way it was. Um, so I just just laid out the knobs on a paper or on a cloth towel. Um, all right, so. I will be uh, taking it apart, and uh, that's what you will see next. With the uh, back removed from the CAT synthesizer, um, I can see the circuit boards and the power supply. Uh, these are the caps that I'm most concerned about uh, on the power supply, and it's they, they look like Rubicon, so it's a very good quality capacitor. And I don't see any bulges on the cap, but I will take the power supply off and check it with a, a ESR meter. Now one thing I do see as a problem, the uh, bus bar for the keyboard is really it shows oxidation. Zoom in there and try to get that focus. So you can see the oxidation on the uh, the keys. You move the keys up and down. So I will go through and clean those with some deox deoxid uh, uh, contact cleaner. Uh, the the effect of having a, a Corotta keyboard bus bar, um, when you would press a key down, it will make all kinds of erratic sounds. So uh, before I clean it, I will um, power it up and test it. But before I power it up, I'm going to um, take the power supply out and double check the uh, capacitance and internal ESR value and make sure the caps are still good before sending dirty power to the uh, um, synthesizer circuit boards. It's pretty neat. I mean, I have worked with circuit boards for a long time and y you get so used to seeing um, circuit boards laid out with CAD but you can see that this circuit board was all manually 
the laid out. You know, somebody hand drew these circuits and and made a uh, etched the uh, the circuit board. Pretty cool. This was way before. Now this is a factory mod for some reason. I don't know. It looks like there was maybe a, a break in the trace. But that's uh that's not my handiwork. <clears throat> Same thing here. That's not my work, that's from the factory. And the this has never been worked on by any repair shop. Um, I believe years ago I replaced a, a slider, but I do pretty good work. That's not mine. Okay, shutting it off. Okay, these are um, 470 microfarad Rubicon capacitors at 35 volts. And let's measure. Let's try to get a good uh, connection. So it looks like this measures 582 at 0.15 ohms resistance. And the other one measures 610, whatever, at uh, 0.14 ohms. So resistance is very, very good, very acceptable. A uh, 35 ohm, a 35 volt capacitor at, you know, around 470 microfarad. Um, an acceptable limit would be about, this is one ohm, so about two ohms would be acceptable. So we are well below, um, well below the, the threshold. And uh, it doesn't surprise me because these are Rubicon capacitors. They're some of the best caps made. All right, so what I'm going to do next is just put the power supply back in and power it up. Let's see what it sounds like. Yep. Okay, this is the uh, moment of truth. Um, the power supply is put back together. I have it hooked up to a little heart key um, base amp. Nothing... Um, it's not really a great keyboard amp, but so let's uh, power this up. I have not powered this synthesizer up for 25 years, uh, and it's a 46-year-old synthesizer. It's from 1976. I, it's old. It's an old synthesizer. So I'm going to uh, get close to the power supply power this on. I am a little afraid, but at least I know the capacitors won't blow it out. Okay. Don't smell any smoke. Let's go back. Focus. Let's turn up a... Uh, an oscillator, or a, a waveform rather, will turn the volume up real knobs kind of sticky, definitely sticky. Ooh, I'm hearing sound. Turn up the volume some more. The um, ADSR is turned all the way down to tax sustain release. So let's crank the release up a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to have to uh, play with this. Let's go down to um, keyboard control.
filter. Oh, let's turn the filter up. Okay. Well, at least uh, I don't have any smoke, so I'm just going to play with it for a little while and see if I can get some sounds out of it. But so far, yeah, it's pretty dead. Okie dokes. Uh, okay, after um, messing around with it a little bit, um, I am getting sound. Um, part of the the problem was the uh, the connection in the back. It's real uh, real scratchy and dirty. Um, so I, I'm going to have to clean that up. But um, let me um, there's there's several problems here. Um, hopefully you can hear that sound on the uh, recording. But you can hear that the, uh, the keyboard is real messed up as far as... Um, let me check the ADSR. Just crank those all the way up. Oh man, this shaky camera. But if you wiggle the key, you can hear that. So uh, <clears throat> I already know the the keyboard bus is real oxidized, so that will have to be repaired or, or cleaned. Um, also, the biggest problem right now is that my um, voltage controlled oscillator number one is not working. <clears throat> So right now I have um, voltage controlled oscillator two turned up. Where the keyboard's really messed up. However, the voltage controlled oscillator number one, I'm getting nothing out of it. And the uh, frequency is adjusted. The um, voltage controlled <clears throat> oscillator one switch is turned on, but I'm getting nothing out. Oh, I hear a little something. So um, it, those will be the issues that I tackle first. Um, trying to figure out why um, VCO1 is not working and also to uh, clean up the, the keyboards, the, the, the contacts on the keyboard. Okay, turning off. Uh, you probably cannot hear this, uh, but I want to document document it anyway. Um, I, I have the synthesizer on bypass, so I don't have to press a, a key down. And uh, I'm just looking into why VCO1 is not working. Um, I have the volume turned up pretty high. And if I crank up the sound. I don't know if you can hear that. Turn the volume up more. So you can hear something um, and if I change the octave so there's something there and if I turn off voltage controlled oscillator with the switch up here I mean, the switch is dirty as hell, but damn focus. 
So it's not like the switch is bad and not allowing the sound to go through. And you can hear how dirty the switches are or the sliders. And if I turn them down and turn up voltage control oscillator too, you know, they, they're, they're working fine. But there's just something going on with the, uh, uh, the op amp or the, the transistor. It, it sounds like it's actually oscillating. It's just not being amplified. Okay, let's turn turn it off. We're good. Mm -hmm. I decided to tackle the keyboard problems first um, because there is a whole bunch of oxidation on the uh, the bus bars and on the J wires. So what I'm doing, I'm connecting an ohm meter one side to a bus bar and the other side to the J wire and when you press the key down it should go to zero ohms and I have already cleaned this small section for both um, bus upper bus bar and lower bus bar and you can see that it's working pretty well you have to get a connection in there. However, uh, this section is where I'm going to work next. And let's, here's a key. That one doesn't look too bad. Let me get in. That doesn't look too bad either. Let's Okay, this one isn't making connection at all. Or now it's now it looks good. Uh, let me change to the lower bus and check the the bottom wire. And the bottom wire isn't connecting at all. A little bit, but you can see how sporadic it is. And that's how this first section was. It was very sporadic. Let me try this bottom bus. Once again, it's not even making connection. Very, yeah, it's very iffy. And let me try this one here. Let's try that bar. And nothing. A little bit you can see the high then it goes low now if I wiggle the key back and forth now even that doesn't work a little bit so th the way I'm cleaning these um, I'm taking a strip of paper it's just regular like a linen writing paper it has a slight texture to it I'm cutting a strip I'm soaking it with 91% um, ipro, uh, IPA, ipropyl alcohol. Soaking the strip, going under the bus bar, and then just kind of like shining shoes. You just kind of go back and forth. And uh, I might as well clean a little bit here. I'll squirt a little bit of alcohol on it, like that. Okay. 
and now I'll just kind of run. It's not very abrasive. You need some abrasion because there's just so much oxidation, but I'm not using sandpaper and I'm not using a polish. It's simply a, um, a piece of paper with alcohol. And for the J wire, um, I press the key down and sandwich it in between there and kind of run it back and forth like that. And then I'll kind of dry it a little bit. And you know that that will be clean. Once it dries off, it will be a nice clean connection without using too much abrasion. Let's see if we can get a get oh I'm on the bottom bus. Okay. So and now we have a connection. Oh, but I didn't clean that bottom bus bar. I'm only cleaning the upper bus bar. So it's a little confusing. It's a polyphonic synth with two bus bars. So there's the uh, good solid connection. Okay, so I'm going to do that all the way across and try to uh, clean up these uh, uh, J wires and buses for the cat synthesizer. Okay, good. I'm going to stop it there. After uh, treating the um, after cleaning the keyboard bus bar and J wires with alcohol, um, I want to treat them with this Deox Gold. Uh, it's a contact conditioner enhancer, and it's made just for gold contacts. Uh, the Cat Synthesizer uses a, a gold plating for the bus bar and J wires. However, there's quite a bit of oxidation, so after cleaning the oxidation with alcohol, I want to coat just the, the contact points with this Deox Gold, and hopefully that will pre prevent any future oxidation. And it's also supposed to enhance the, the contact. Uh, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to um, just soak this piece of paper with the Deox Gold, stick it in between the um, J wire and bus bar, and just push the key down and go back and forth a little bit. It, nothing too fancy. It's just a matter of getting some lubricate. Not, it's not really lubrication. It's just a conditioner. Um, to prevent oxidation in the, in the future. So I'm going to do that throughout the entire keyboard. And the keyboard um, has been completely cleaned, like the bus bars and the J wires. So I'm just testing it out. All of the notes sound real solid. There's no wobbling. But one thing, there's many, there's going to be many problems with this keyboard uh, or with the synthesizer. But one thing is it's very clanky, uh, clacky. So I will probably replace the rubber bushings that are inside of the keyboard. Uh, but other th that will be the last like cherry on the top of the, the cake there. Um, there's quite a few issues. Uh, probably most of them will be cleaning controls. The um, main oscillator uh, number two You can hear how unstable the uh, potentiometer is. So um, that at first I thought my keyboard was still messed up, but 
if the um, tuner is in a, a dirty spot, the, the keys will sound bad. So th this will have to get clean. Um, I also noticed that the noise level, well that's actually sounding better now. I've been moving it up and down. But you can see how non-linear it sounds. And the main problem is um, voltage controlled oscillator number one is still completely dead. There, I'm getting absolutely no activity out of this oscillator. It, this oscillator works fine. Uh, but voltage controlled oscillator one is, is dead. So um, my, my next plan of attack is to flip it back over take the circuit boards out and start looking at them under the microscope. Uh, the good thing about voltage controlled oscillator 1 and 2, they both use the same um, transistor array chip and, and I'm hoping that they are socketed. So what I will do is I will swap the voltage controlled oscillator 2 with 1, like the IC chips, and see if the problem follows. It, the, the the goal would be by swapping the chip voltage controlled oscillator 1 will start to work and voltage controlled oscillator 2 will be dead but um, we, we will see the, the chips are pretty cheap okay I uh, believe that I found that the problem with the oscillator, voltage controlled oscillator 1, um, there is a transistor array, let me focus this, called a, a CA3046 that consists of five uh, transistors and this is for um, voltage controlled oscillator 1 and this over here, the, the same transistor array, is for voltage controlled oscillator 2, and that uh, that works. Um, if you look at the schematic right here and try to focus, uh, this is for voltage controlled oscillator 1, and it the cat is using 3 of the five um, transistors. Uh, that little resistor on top of the uh, chip, that's a th thermistor. So what will happen, it will, uh, when the chip gets hot, uh, there will be a, um, like a, a feedback going to an op amp. Uh, it's this trans. It's that resistor right there. It's a 2k uh, thermistor. So when the uh, when the IC chip gets hot, it will change the gain of the op amp and make an adjustment, feeding into the circuit. Anyway, uh, the way that I found that the part is actually bad, I'm measuring. Um, I'm using a, um, a junction meter um, and actually uh, treating it like a regular transistor, uh, putting the positive lead on pin 2, for, ex for example, on the base, and the negative leads on the collector and then on the emitter. And you, you do that for all, for, for really for the three, but you can test the entire chip uh, that way and I discovered that on voltage controlled oscillator um, number one um, a couple of the built-in transistors are actually bad uh, they're showing an, an open so uh, unfortunately it's going to be a little tricky to get this part out not sure how good my lighting is 
Let me go around this way. But it won't be too bad. I'll just kind of move it out of the way and uh, change out that part and uh, see how it goes. Alrighty. I took the bad chip, the um, transistor array, out of the synthesizer, and it's this guy right here. And this is the brand new uh, 3046 transistor array. I want to show you how to test uh, how to test the junctions. So I'm going to put the positive lead on the base, which is pin two, and I will put my other lead the negative lead on the collector and then on the emitter which is pin 1 and pin 3 so this is the good chip and you can see I'm reading about 0.842 on the meter and I'll check pin 3 out same thing and that junction is good on the bad chip that that particular transistor array or that particular transistor but now let's go to the next one pin 4 is the base and then pin 3 will be the emitter that's good pin 5 is the collector that's good Whoop. pin 5 is good now let's try the bad chip pin 4 and pin 3 we don't have a junction right there it's dead if I look at pin 5 we have a good junction but not pin 3 so this is my bad section there, there's also another bad one here on pin 6 7 and 8 but the cat synthesizer is not using that particular transistor it's only using Q1, Q2 and Q5 for the uh, for the circuit anyway uh, that's how that's how I found the chip to be bad using a junction tester diode tester on the meter okay I'm going to put the uh, the chip back in and go on from there I'm in the process of cleaning my potentiometers and switches uh, on the CAT synthesizer. Uh, primarily the uh, the rotary potentiometers and the uh, and the slide switches or the switches. Uh, I'm using uh, Deox Five for the cleaning. And then I'm following up with the uh, Fader 100 from Deox. And it, it's doing a good job of cleaning the uh, potentiometers. Um, however, when I tried it with the uh, slide pot, um, it, especially spraying the Deox 5, it just turned it into a, a gritty, hard-to-move potentiometer. Uh, this pot hasn't been touched and it's just silky smooth and buttery same thing with this potentiometer um, with the Deox 5 on here it's just it's scratchy hard to move uh, very disappointing um, so that was with the Deox 5 then I followed it up with the Deox um, fader 100 still scratchy and then I even tried this um, deox fader lube and uh, put several drops in there and worked it back and forth and um, I'm still not happy with the way it's working out so I will probably have to buy some fader grease to um, get get that feel back again it's just um, really disappointing.
I, I, I hate that scratchy feel. But for the other pots, uh, the Deox 5 and the Fader 100 will do a good job of cleaning up. Um, one other item that I found um, when checking the, uh, the potentiometers, these little trimmer pots. Um, this one in particular is a, let me see get focused on it. It's a 100 ohm trimmer pot and it was actually open. If you measure, let me get a, a little, if you measure from, where are we here? Just bear with me. So if you measure from here to here, that's um, one end of the potentiometer to the other, so you will read 100 ohms. However, the two center pins that are tied together, <clears throat> that's the sweep arm. So you should be able to measure from the center to one end and from the center to the other end. And, you know, it, let, let's say the potentiometer is halfway in the middle. For a 100 ohm potentiometer, you should measure 50 ohms on one side and 50 ohms on the other. However, it was open. I, I was getting infinite resistance on both of them, from the center to one end, the center to the other. And what I did, I twisted, you know, I, I turned the pot a little bit, and then boom, it started working. So there is oxidation on these little trimmer pots. And what's interesting, that trimmer pot feeds the um, transistor array that I'm about to change because this transistor array was bad. So even if I replaced the transistor array, uh, the signal would never have gotten to it. So there's like, there's two problems here. Let me uh, see if I can show you on the schematic. If I can uh, focus that, this is the 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 pot, the 100 ohm pot um, that feeds the transistor array. So I know this transistor array is bad, but this pot was oxidized and bad also. So um, it, it, when you're going through your cat, make sure you check any kind of potentiometer for oxidation. Uh, this is the other circuit board in the CAT synthesizer that contains the master volume control, noise generator, uh, the filter and Q. Um, I just wanted to show how oxidized these switches are. This is the switch that will turn on and off voltage controlled oscillator one, which I was having problems with, um, which I found a bad um, trimmer resistor feeding the circuit and also a bad transistor array chip. But even if those were repaired, this guy can still bite you, which is the switch that will turn on and off the voltage controlled oscillator. So I'm just going to put a um, meter across. It should read zero ohms. Here the switch is off. Here the switch is on. And you can see just how flaky it is. It should be zero. Completely zero ohms. Off nothing. If you short the two leads together, it's, it's zero. A switch is the same thing. Now it's zero, but if you tap it, boom. I mean, that's open right now. So it's just one more thing to um, to do when you are restoring a vintage synthesizer. Go through, uh, clean all of your switches and pots with the deox 
this is what I'm cleaning it with a Deox 5 and then I'm going through again and following up with this uh, Deox F100 uh, fader lubricant. Um, I'm not really touching my sliders again until I find a, a better solution that gives it the real smooth glidey feel but for switches and pots use this stuff. Okay, a uh, real super quick follow-up. I did a, a couple quick spurts of the uh, Deox 5 and then the, the follow-up with the uh, F100. And you can see the switch is rock solid, completely off, completely on. Tap it, it's stable. It's really best to let this stuff dry for an hour because there is some conductivity with the, the liquid, but um, it, I can see that I won't have to replace the uh, the switch. It's it's still a good switch. So I'm just going to do that for the rest of the switches and pots. I'm uh, really not happy with the way the uh, Deox 5 cleaned that one potentiometer in the beginning of the video. It's just not buttery smooth. It's real, you know, kind of, it drags. So um, I'm going to uh, take it apart, figure out where I can put a little grease and put it back together again. So um, stay tuned. Uh, this is the um, slide um, slider from the uh, the synthesizer taken apart. Uh, you may not see it very well in the video, but um, this is what it looked. Whoops! This is what it looked like. Kind of pulls apart. Um. There is a whole bunch of lube. I had squirted lube inside, so it's coated with lube, but it's still very rough to move. Uh, this is the resistive track, and this is a, um, a just a piece of metal that connects to the, the two bottom lugs, and I see oxidation on there. Uh, but my main reason for taking it apart is because it's not a nice heavy glide feel. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just clean everything uh, with a Q-tip and alcohol. Uh, get off all the old lube that I squirted in there. I'm going to clean the inside housing in here. Uh, this will all kind of come apart. <clears throat> Then I'm going to uh, surgically put a drop of the deoxid fader lube right on the resistive strip and on the metal contact, just those two areas. And then I'm going to use a, a dielectric grease. It's a silicone grease. Um, I'm going to use that for... Uh, this little surface um, along each side of the uh, the, the breadboard. <clears throat> I'm just going to. <clears throat> I'm not going to put it on the metal itself or the resistive strip. It's just going to go a little bit on the um, board itself, and I'm also going to put the uh, dielectric grease on the inside metal of the uh, slider on both of these surfaces and probably on the um, top part of the slider, inside top part and hopefully that will give me a nice heavy uh, feel uh, going back and forth 
I mean, it already feels nice and smooth here. It just drives me crazy, but um, that's that's my approach, and I will put it together, and it will be good enough. Uh, the potentiometer is put back together. I, I cleaned it real well with alcohol. Uh, dielectric grease on the mechanical moving parts and uh, the um, fader lube for the, um, uh, um, the electrical uh, carbon strip and also the little metal strip. Um, so before I fold the tabs back over to, you know, seal the deal, I just want to make sure that the uh, potentiometer electrically is working. So, boy, that is smooth as butter. This is a 100K potentiometer. I don't see any jumps or jerks. All right, so it bottoms out at about 82k or 82, um, yeah, 82k. But as far as the feel, wow, wow, that it's just like butter. It's the way. God intended it to be. That's that's absolutely fantastic. Okay, I will fold the tabs and put it back, solder it back into the synthesizer and power it up. Alrighty, it's uh, time to put this uh, cat back together. Um, one thing that I will be doing, um, and you may not see it, in the video, but there are some little um, little caps that appear on the front panel. Uh, this is a little cap here. There are a, a couple more here. Uh, these caps will, they're not capacitors, they're little plastic tabs that will pop out of the front and they will expose the uh, trimmer let me get in here. It will expose, uh, it give you access to these little uh, trimmer pots and you will use those for uh, the calibration procedure which will be a different video. Alrighty, there's old doggy Rio. They're all ready for the, uh, have a, a cat working in the house. All right, so the cat is back together. Everything's hooked up correctly. Um, I popped out all these little cover caps to expose the, the tremors. But this is the first time it's being powered on after cleaning the pots and finding uh, the bad chip for a voltage controlled oscillator. So it's, it's always scary turning something on Okay. Now I have all of the voices turned off, so we shouldn't get anything. Let's turn up voltage controlled oscillator 2. This used to work, and I have to turn my volume up. Awesome. So we have sound. Oh, glide is up, okay. Very good. But now, the moment of truth. Will voltage controlled oscillator one work? <laughs> oh yeah! We got sound. That's fantastic, fantastic.
So it, it's going to take me a little time to remember how everything works here. It, it's been a while. But at least... Interesting. I, I still have some issues here. Why sub-octave isn't working. Okay, well, it's going to take me some time to go through and see what's working and what's not, but I'm thrilled that um, Voltage Controlled Oscillator 1 is working now. concludes this uh, th this video um, what I will do next after playing with it for a couple of days and figuring out what's wrong what's not and tr fixing that uh, the next thing I want to really do is replace the uh, keyboard bushings uh, it's still a pretty noisy uh, noisy keyboard the uh, rubber bushings are all dried out so I already ordered the um, rubber bushings from uh, Centaur. It's a company that specializes in synthesizer repair. Uh, the guys are located in Texas. Uh, they have a great website. Um, anyway, uh, I hope this video has helped anyone who has a vintage synthesizer or a cat synthesizer. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Um, I, I noticed that some of the keys were still not working or intermittent. Um, I turned the synthesizer over, exposed the keyboard, and uh, wiped off any excess uh, deox gold that was on the bus bars or the J wires. I just kind of took a paper towel and wiped wiped them clean so there was no like thick residue and there were still still some notes that were not working and I made some adjustments to the little J wires you can see if the bottom J wire is not touching it will kind of bounce around uh, so after making a few adjustments the keyboard is working good. However, I'm not going crazy until I replace these uh, bushings. And once the bushings are replaced, maybe it will change the the height a little bit. I'm not sure. I, I never did it before. But once I have new bushings in it, then I will go through and make minor adjustments to the J wires. But but all in all, it's, it's working pretty good. Uh, the other problem um, it, th that I saw uh, just a, a, a few minutes ago uh, was that the uh, sub-octave wasn't working in voltage-controlled oscillator 1 and it, it really does work uh, 
what had happened, I had the uh, sink um, the sink turned on for voltage controlled oscillator two to sync with one. And that kind of like, if it's turned down a, a certain amount, uh, then it cuts off and you won't hear uh, sub-octave. The, the other guys you will hear but you won't hear sub-octave one unless the, the frequency is turned up higher. But if you turn off the sync So um, once again, uh, the synthesis, I went through every um, possible scenario, uh, every switch and pot and function is working. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is go through these um, key bushings and get things uh, sounding better. Uh, to just replace the bushings with brand new rubber uh, bushings. Alright, once again, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.